Hey, 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 welcome back to my channel. Uh, right now I am in the coast of the beautiful Mediterranean Sea and today I'm bringing you a high-level contemporary art event in Beijing. That is Beijing Contemporary Art Expo 2021. And you may say, how are you going to show me an event far away in Beijing? Well, you are in Spain. For those of you who know me, know this channel, I do everything on my own. I do the filming, editing, publishing, interacting with you guys all by myself. I don't have any help. So you might wonder how I do this. Originally, I wasn't thinking to do this because I thought it's not really convenient, it's not really fair to judge a fair from far. But I had some tickets laying around at home. I asked my parents if they would like to visit and they said, why not? They went uh, yesterday and they took 250 photos and videos and they sent to me and asked me if I can do something with the material. At first I thought, you know, they were shaky, they were not well framed, not professionally made. I might just archive them and then I thought about, you know, it's really hard to travel to Beijing to China to see those kind of art events maybe it's a good idea to show you guys what's happening there for those of you who are interested in Asian art Chinese art who are thinking to work in China with Chinese galleries and players in art this is actually a very good window for you to see uh, what's going on the latest trends so I'm gonna show you my second-handed opinion and what I have seen and heard from the photos and footages and you can also judge just like you see the materials you don't have to just follow my opinion um for those of you who want to see more art less of my face sorry about that next time next week i'll be visiting the estampa art fair in madrid so by then i will shoot more professionally made photo and videos and put more art and less of my face so next time all right so without further ado let's get into today's video beijing contemporary art expo 2021 one, this one here is um, a very young fair. It opened its stores in 2018 and quickly grew in 2019. It already had over 80,000 visitors, if I'm not wrong, in just three days. So how it works is like many other art fairs. The first two days are only for professionals and VIPs. The uh, next three days are for general public. So 80,000 the second year is not bad. It's quite successful, emerging, and uh, yeah, I didn't expect it to be such a huge fair. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, this year I wasn't able to visit either of the two important art fairs in Beijing. In the Beijing uh, Agriculture uh, Exhibition Center, this agriculture center is not really for agriculture, it's actually for culture rather than agriculture. Art Beijing and Design Beijing, the twin fair happening at the same time, at the same place, is like the major competitor to the Contemporary Art Expo. I was there in 2019, but I wasn't able to come in May 2021 because I already flew to Spain for my PhD. You know, I have to say if I could visit one art fair it would be this expo instead of Art Beijing because I feel that the Contemporary Art Expo is more specialized, more contemporary, more focused on contemporary artists, emerging artists, and more like okay international but still yet emerging artists. You know Art Beijing is, is too general together with design you can already imagine how is it like. Going back to this fair it uh, was rescheduled actually originally it was going to open on the 28th of August but finally it opened yesterday the 13th of October and uh, my first impression of the fair is that it's a table for the big boys game unfortunately this is a tendency all over the world big capitals like you know large companies in the world are participating in those uh, activities in the art market like for example this one I saw the logo immediately the Baidu you know Baidu is like a Google in China it's very difficult to compete against if you want to do something different but this is uh, inevitable because when they want to come to the art market to have a piece of the cake they could probably take the whole cake because they're that powerful but as a smaller player a smaller you know imagine if you're art gallery or association or individual artist you can still do interesting things you don't have to be overwhelmed by the capital you can go niche go local go digital there are many different ways to do something different but my first impression was that oh my goodness it's coming like you know uh, big companies capitals they're coming and I was a bit overwhelmed and my second impression is that it's surprisingly international considering the amount of restrictions like the international travel ban during COVID and all this quarantine you have to go through as a foreign visitor or even as a Chinese visitor coming to China um, upon entering the border you have to go to a hotel and you have to be put together <laughs> I made a video during my quarantine and you can see the life there I did only uh, two weeks but now you have to do like three weeks quarantine I guess that's the reason that even you are interested in Chinese art you are not 
visiting China because it's really impossible to travel to China. Over 60 art galleries from all over the world are showcasing their artists under six different categories. It's their curatorial statement. Uh, value, future, energy, and wonder, digitalization, basically for digital installation, cool time for collective time, special art project. If you're looking for successful art players uh, or uh, galleries or associations in China, many artists ask me, like, how can I get in touch with them? You know, who are they? Here you go. This is the list. Go ahead, follow them on social media, talk to them. Next time, if you see a, a expo closer to your hometown, you can go and talk to them. Uh, they have their branch in China. Uh, for example, I met this, uh, well, I remotely met Renee Mailer from Mailer Gallery. Uh, there is a uh, branch in Switzerland, there is a branch in Beijing. Um, if you're in Europe, maybe you can, you know, contact their Swiss branch to have a chance to talk to their, you know, Beijing branch. Um, things like that, you know, you can see um, there are really big galleries like Pace Gallery. So it's reassuring to see large galleries coming to the fair. But also it could be kind of overwhelming if you're a smaller a gallery or smaller artist, you might be intimidated by like, you know, thinking how are you going to compete against them or how you are going to grab the viewer's attention um, among this very strong presence. My third impression is that people are very passionate about contemporary art in Beijing, in China. Um, I think there's still a big space to grow there. Um, the art market in China dropped just like everywhere else in the world. I think a few years ago, like three, four years ago, it dropped a lot. But I think there is still space to grow in the merchandising or art toy section. I see uh, there are so many uh, commercialization projects like these uh, toys, the prints and smaller gadgets. And I don't know if gadgets is the right word to describe it, but I don't have any better word to describe it. So it's a good thing, I would say, for galleries, for artists and for collectors as well. Uh, the entry rate to collecting is lowered by the more friendly kind of art toys. So if you are thinking about selling them or collecting them, um, this fair is really good for it. Yeah, I don't mean that is a bad thing. I think it's a very positive thing during the uh, difficult years like right now. Another thing I've noticed is the uh, digital new media installation. Um, like any other art fairs, there is at least one large scale installation like the centerpiece of the exhibition and it acts like a decor or elevation of this whole ambient and it's really cool. Uh, my parents really enjoyed it. Uh, I see that you know they capture your face with the mask so you don't have to worry about the biometric data leak and it makes your face into a digital piece of uh, portrait and it's really fun and it's really friendly for uh, people who don't really know art, art history like you know children, uh, older people and interactive new media art is really a good way to introduce new media art to you know bring exposure to this niche but one complaint I have is that I didn't see much of more new media art that are actually collectible so this piece is not for sale of course it's not possible to collect it it's not really collectible physically and financially um, but there aren't many like smaller pieces like for TV like the size of an iPad um, in some other fairs in Europe I've seen more of those digital pieces uh, on the iPad, but those during this expo I didn't see. So I would say this is something I would like to see in the future if they would be more um, price friendly, physically collectible, if they are more collectible and um, let's say budget friendly, <laughs> low cost new media art, it would be really a good market for China. That's just my opinion. I would close today's video with a funny encounter. Um, my mom uh, suddenly FaceTimed me and she was like, hey, you know, I saw this guy and I think he's your friend. <laughs> she turned the camera around and I saw Martin Weimer, you know, the artist I interviewed when I was in Beijing. I would also drop a link to the interview. He's an old friend of mine, old not by age, but by the years I've known him. I've known him for over 10 years um, in Beijing. So you can see his uh, artworks are very stylish. Um, you can recognize that it's his work from far. And I asked him, you know, what's the difference between this year's event and the year before? And he was like, ah, oh, there's no beverage, there's no drinks anywhere, like I'm so dry, you know. This situation is still um, strange. It's still in a pandemic, so uh, very hard to come in. No alcohol. Uh, compared to before, 
yeah, pressure to the galleries, they're looking a little bit more commercial. But it's okay, good luck, I hope, something going on. <laughs> Bye bye. Uh, my parents were also complaining and they were like, I tried to buy water, but they didn't sell water. I saw that people waste bottled water. I went to ask, you know, where did you buy them? And they were like, we are workers here. We brought our own water. <laughs> so it was a pity that they had to exit the venue, bring their water back. Nobody stopped them for bringing their water, but there isn't much of the VIP event look and feel. <laughs> my mom was like, why there's so many VIPs? Like, where did they come from? But still, it's a idea of the VIP. During the pandemic, you know, they don't really encourage you to mix um, beverage and food and like, you know, stick food into your mouth with mask off. So I understand that is not practical, but still, they could have maybe done better in terms of uh, customers viewing experience rather than purchasing experience, because I think going to art fairs isn't just about buying, but also the whole package of being there, talking to people in a more relaxed environment. <laughs> it's super crowded. <laughs> um, it's probably the most crowded VIP fair I've seen. <laughs> all right, that's all for today. Sun is setting. Um, I've tried my best to show you the best footage I could get. <laughs> um, copyright free for me because they authorized this um, materials to me so i could have purchased probably from a kind of a stock image or from other people but i feel that it wouldn't be authentic i would still uh, like to do everything on my own more artisanal if i may say so um excuse me for this shaky image and let me know what you think of this art fair in the comment below so that's all for today thank you very much for watching see you next time Hey, 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 I would like to use this opportunity to say thank you to our lovely patrons. Thank you very much for your support. If you would like to know more about what we do, just click on our website, check it out, and our Patreon page as well. Thank you and see you in the next video.